taller than me. Um, <clears throat> looking back is the luxury of getting old, isn't it? Um, we can look back on our lives and ponder things. Um, I'm looking back at a time before I was this. I was, <laughs> I was married before. I got married very young and I was married for about 15 years. And it came to the end. It sort of fizzled out like a bottle of Coke and all that you're left with is that dark bit at the bottom with no fizz. <laughs> and even vodka won't save it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That was my first marriage. It took me 15 years to realise that now. Um, and it came to the end. And I was at, when I first met my husband, I was young. I was 17. And when I came out of the marriage, I was 37. And being single at 37 was a lot different from being single at 17. <laughs> I didn't know how to do it because I'd never been a grown-up woman and single. And what do you do? So I did what any 37-year-old uh, woman would do coming out of divorce. I thought, I'll go traveling. I'll go and see some countries and some people. Um, <laughs> and I went on a wee bit of journey around the world. And uh, I went to visit my friend Elisa, who lives in Malta. She's a Malteser. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I use that all the time in Malta. I got quite wearing. And uh, she <laughs> so she said, oh, you know, my boyfriend works in the local hotel. He works in the cabana, which I thought sounded fabulously exciting. It was actually a tiny wee hut that sold ice creams and uh, sun loungers. It wasn't exciting at all. And we went to we went to visit him in his in his hotel and we set up for the day by the pool. And it was great, and I was lying there in my bikini because, you know, it was before having children, and I'm, I had quite a nice body then. <laughs> and uh, I was lying by the pool, and we were having a great time. So now, you know, because it was, it was like, it was a time before you realised that skin cancer existed, you know. It was like, fact or nothing, um, I, I, we were lying, tanning. We're having a great time. And late in the afternoon, this man walked in to the poolside and everybody's heads turned, men and women alike, whoosh. And this man walked in and he was the closest thing to physical perfection I've ever seen. <laughs> he had a suntan so dark it was like Polish jarra. <laughs> you, you, you could have stuck envelopes between his abs, you know. Like, uh, like, who knew men could be like that? Oh, he, he was shiny and he was hard and... <laughs> <laughs> He's not like my husband. <laughs> if he had, I'd still be fucking married. <laughs> sorry. sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, so this man in his micro black shorts, like micro, like, I mean, who wears that? No, I've never seen it. I mean, these weren't even Speedos. They were smaller, you know. <laughs> But you know when you see a disgusting man in Speedos and you all go, ooh, nobody went, ooh, everybody went, ooh. <laughs> you can wear them any time. So he, he's, got these wee, he's got these wee pants on and we all look at him and I said to Elisa, I didn't say that. <laughs> I said, I'm not, I'm not that old that I've kicked the bucket. Um, I looked at him and I said to Lisa, I wouldn't mind a night with a man like that, you know. <laughs> And she said, go and ask him out. And I went, I'm not 12, no way. And she said, I'll ask him out. And do you know that way when you were at school and your friend went, I'll ask him out for you. And you went, yeah, 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 do that, do that. Yeah, yeah, that sounds a good idea. And she went, yeah, I'll go. So I'm like, yeah, go. I'm fine, I'm fine with that. She'll never do it. She'll never do it. No, she did it. <laughs> and she comes back and she goes, he's Italian, doesn't speak any English. She says, but I'm fluent in Italian, as Maltese are. So I've given them a note with your number on it. And I'm like, okay, I'm good for this. And she says, we're going to meet in the hotel lobby at eight o'clock tonight. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I'm really up for this because I was quite attractive back then, but I wasn't that fucking attractive, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and already I'm looking down going, it's too late to do sit-ups, fuck, you know. <laughs> Um, 
So we went back to Lisa's house and I had a shower and I got dressed and I said to Lisa, what should I wear? And she went, what's it fucking matter? It's a done deal, you know, like, what are you going to wear? It's either you, you're in there, you know. So I put on, <laughs> put on jeans and a wee top, no bra. It was before breastfeeding ch children, you know, when they stayed up there. So it was okay and we're good to go. Went into, went into the, into Valletta and the, her and her boyfriend, it was, like, it was like in a film, they drove me to the end of the lane and I got out and they went, we'll see you in the morning, bye. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. And it was kind of before mobile phones, you know, that really worked. So you were on your own. I realised at this point I was committed to this endeavour. So I walked slowly and I'm looking about thinking I could just, I could just go for a walk. I could just walk all night. And I thought, no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Think of the abs. Think of the abs. <laughs> so I walked down to the hotel and uh, there's like steps down into the bar. And I looked down and there he is, surrounded by women and men, creepily. Um, <laughs> and he, he had like, it was, it was like Jesus in the Last Supper. He had all the, the a congregation around him. And I thought, oh, oh, I was like, I was just about to spin on my heels and leg it. And he caught my eye and went, ciao, Bella. And I was like, oh, shit, I have to do this now. So I walked down the stairs and I went, ciao. <laughs> that was as far as the language thing got, you know. Like I hadn't picked up anything in the interim. Um, and I sat down and we looked at each other and went, <laughs> ciao. <laughs> uh, and then I did what everybody does in that position. I went to the toilet to check if everything was okay. You know, I don't know what I was checking, but I thought I have to go to the toilet. So I went to the toilet and the girls from the bar followed me to the toilet. <laughs> They had these wee girls, and there were like 17, there was like about 10 of them, this pack of wee girls, and I get in the toilet, and obviously I didn't need a pee, so I'm just in the, washing my hands, you know, like you do, nervously, and uh, the girls said to me, how do you know Luigi? And I'm like, at that moment, I hadn't realised he had a name. <laughs> it was Luigi, and I said... I don't know Luigi. I gave him my number this afternoon and tonight I'm going to spend the night with him. <gasps> and I, I said it just for shock and all the girls went, <gasps> and I thought, mm -hmm. see, you might be young, you might have collagen on your side, but I have brazen hussy on my side. <laughs> She who dares wins. Um, so I went back out to the bar and he's talking to the barman and, and they're talking to each other and they do that knowing look, you know, like, you know what they've been talking about. Oh, it's so embarrassing. And now it's his turn to go to the toilet. And then it occurred to me, what's he going to the toilet for? And then I thought, condoms. Because when you're married, you don't use condoms. Well, I didn't. Still didn't have any children, but still, that's another story. Um, so he was going for condoms. I thought I hadn't even factored that in said to the barman, I'll have a gin and tonic. I said, no, I'll make it a double. I said, no, I'll make it a triple. Easy on the tonic, just put the tonic on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this, it's going to take three gins to get this. Um, so I downed that gin very, very quickly. He comes back from the toilet. That was it. And I thought there might have been a bit back and forth. Uh, no, there was no back and forth. There was a hand holding led to the elevator lift. And I thought, this is it. <laughs> this is it. I can't back out of this now. I am truly shitting myself. And we get, <laughs> we get in the lift and I looked at him and he had this pale blue silk polo shirt, which was like spray on. And his body was even more attractive than I had even anticipated up close. And I touched his chest and there was no give in that chest. <laughs> it was just like, it stopped just there. <laughs> I thought, please don't touch my stomach. Please don't. <laughs> please don't touch my stomach. So we get up the elevator and we walk along the corridor to his room and it's room 102, and I remember that in case he was a serial killer. Um, an attractive serial killer, but he still could have been one, right? And uh, we open the door in his room, and there's like a bed. Nothing else, just a fucking bed. And I looked at it and I thought, well, this chit chat is over. We've had Chow Bella. <laughs> and uh, we got undressed. And on the, on the bed was this pamphlet, and he was a 
judo instructor for the Italian police. And he was here for a competition. That's how you get a body like that. Just do a lot of judo. So I, I don't know if he'd laid it there for my perusal, but I was impressed, you know, like, that worked for me, mate, you know. So he got undressed. And, and you know when you're just like, you're in films when their jaws drop as he got undressed? I just looked and went, Jesus Christ, that's what a man's meant to look like. <laughs> so we had our night of fairly gymnastic, uh, <laughs> intense lovemaking. I will not go into details, but I'll tell you this. A man who can do one-arm press-ups can do an amazing thing in bed, right? <laughs> that, it, it was incredible. We had this... <laughs> I, I was quite light at the time, a bit gelatinous, but I was quite light. Uh, and he was kind to me. He never at any point made it in a wobble. And we had this great night of sex, and it was incredible. And in the morning, I woke up, and my hair was like a troll doll. You know when it's like... <laughs> do you know when it's all been fuzzed at the back too much? Um, <laughs> it was proper fucking fuzzed, right? And... And that was the first thing that I touched in the morning was I felt my hair and I thought, oh, Jesus. And then I looked over. It'd gone. My bubble had burst. The perfect night, like that, bubble was burst. And I thought, fuck, you know, it was great. And then the door opened and there's Luigi with two coffees, two pan of chocolates. Oh. <laughs> And we walked onto his balcony as I'm trying to clap down my troll doll here, <laughs> thinking, oh, I can still pull this back. <laughs> we go in his balcony, we sat, we looked at each other, not a word spoken, because we still didn't speak each other's languages. And we had the coffee and we had the pan of chocolate. And he got out a wee piece of paper and he wrote his name and his address. And he handed it to me and went, Next, if you're in Rome, come and visit me. And I'm like... <laughs> A, he speaks. B, he speaks like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> you were well to keep that one hidden, buddy. <laughs> and it was a perfect night and a perfect morning. He kissed me on the cheek and I did the walk of shame home. But you know what? I wasn't fucking ashamed. I was proud because for that one night, I was a badass bitch who got what she wanted. <laughs> And as a footnote to that, I've still got the bit of paper with his name and address. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I'm Jill.